Hello and welcome to part 3 of the bedroom renovation series on making home better. In part 1 of the video, the room went through a huge change by removing the very dated wallpaper and putting a fresh coat of paint. In part 2, we took it a step further and added LED lights and made it blend into the room by adding cove molding. Both videos are linked above and in the description. Our daughter is super happy to move in already, but we have a few more tweaks to make to the room to make it even more special. In this video, we will add a modern accent wall with a custom initial in the middle that can easily be swapped out in the future as my daughter grows or we use it for a different purpose. As always, I am learning as I go and will certainly share my experiences and any tips I picked up along the way with you so that your projects can be that much easier. If you find this interesting and are interested in such videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Doing this helps reach this content to even more people and I would certainly appreciate it. I will also leave a link to all the relevant products I used in the video in the description. Let's get started. Several months ago, I had done a mock-up of the design using SketchUp. Doing this really helped me make some tweaks to the design and also helped get input from the family on their design suggestions. I used this as a reference and measured out the wall, starting by splitting it into three equal parts and marking it using blue tape. Right away, I found out that I did not take an electrical outlet into account and had to slightly modify the design. For the design, we used the leftover trim pieces from part 2 of the video. These are 1x3 pine boards that are already primed from Home Depot. Before attaching them to the wall, I put on two coats of the same paint we used on the wall since it's much easier to do this in the garage now than once it's attached to the wall. To attach the trim pieces to the wall, I used a Bosch GLL2 self-leveling cross-line laser to help line up the pieces and attach the studs whenever possible. I started off by attaching the two vertical pieces using my rigid 18 volt brad nailer and 2 inch brad nails. A tip I would have for this process is to also use some glue in attaching the trim. I did not do this, but doing so I think would help with better adhesion, especially with the old warped walls. Another tip I used from a video I saw on Fix This Build That was to put blue tape over where I am attaching the brad nails. This leaves a small hole in the blue tape which makes filling in with wood filler later much easier since the filler would only be contained to the hole and not spread over the other areas. Once the vertical pieces were up, I followed the same process for the diagonal pieces for adhering to the wall. I took my time in marking the pieces directly on the wall and using this as a reference to make the cuts using my miter saw. The cross line laser came in extremely handy to ensure that the pieces were attached in perfect angles. With the blue tape approach for filling in the holes, it made smoothing out the wood filler very easy. After removing the tape, a quick sand left a very smooth finish. I used the same wood filler to fill in all the joints as well. As I mentioned earlier, I did not use any glue to adhere the trim to the wall. This, combined with the fact that the wall is slightly warped, meant that there were gaps in certain areas between the trim and the wall. This was not a big deal and was easily taken care of by using some caulk. I learned from my mistake in part 2 of the series and got myself a paintable caulk this time. I put a small bead of this on all seams and it provided a clean and professional look to the trim. 
I followed this up by touching up the caulk and all the areas I passed with paint once again. With this, we were ready to move on to the next step. To create the centerpiece for this accent wall, I made a template of the letter R. The size is custom based on the diamond opening left by the trim, and once I figured out the rough dimensions, I used a free website called rasterbader.net to print out a template. This is a very handy site that lets you upload an image and specify how large you would like the output to be. And this will generate a PDF file that you can print out on regular 8x10 sheets of paper and join together to create the template. I cut out the template using an X-Acto knife and taped it together onto a scrap piece of melamine I had laying around. I transferred this template to the melamine by tracing around the template. Using a jigsaw and a fine tooth blade, I cut out the letter, paying close attention to the corners. Once completed, I put a small round over on the front of the letter using my trim router. This, along with the quick sanding, gave a clean look and smoothed out some of the imperfections left by the jigsaw. I added a few small cutoff pieces of the trim to the back of the letter using brad nails. This was done to provide some separation between the wall and the letter to give a three-dimensional look and make it really pop from the wall. Two coats of the white trim paint and this was ready to go. To attach it to the wall, I used a couple of Z-clips and centered it on the diamond opening on the accent wall. This is very much an easy and quick update compared to the wallpaper removal and the LED trim install in the previous videos. Not only is it easy and low cost, but it makes a really big impact and provides a wow factor to the room. You can of course modify the design to your liking and make it your own, especially by creating a different design for the middle. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you enjoyed this, please consider giving it a like and subscribing for more such videos, especially the last couple of updates remaining in this bedroom renovation series. Thank you very much for spending your time checking this out and I hope you find it helpful. Until next time, take care.